Welcome back to part two of our series on questions involving Coulomb's law. In part one, we looked at question number one, and we started question number two, specifically part A. In this video, we'll focus on part B and C and question three. So again, question two reads, the magnitude of the electrostatic force between two small, essentially point-like charged objects is 5.0 times 10 to the power of negative 5 newtons. Calculate the force for each of the following situations. For question B, the charge on one object is tripled while the charge on the other object is halved. So I know we've done part A already, but I want to go over what to do with part B from scratch. What you see on your screen is the formula for Coulomb's law. We have the constant K times the charge of one of the objects and times the charge of the other object divided by the distance between them represented by R raised to the power of two. The very first thing that I want to do is find out what happens when we substitute this amount in for F. So if I substitute that in for F, I end up getting 5.0 times 10 to the power of negative five newtons is equal to K times Q sub one times Q sub two over R to the power of two. Next, I'm going to solve for R. So to do that, I will multiply both sides by R squared. This cancels out with that, leaving us with the following expression on the left side. And then I'll divide both sides by 5.0 times 10 to the power of negative five newtons. That way I have R squared is equal to K times Q1 times Q2 over 5.0 times 10 to the power of negative five newtons. I'm going to set up another equation using the Coulomb's law, but instead of Q sub one being simply Q sub one, I will rewrite it as three times Q sub one since one of the objects is being tripled. And the other Q value, I will write it down as 0 0.5 Q sub two. If that's confusing to you, let me show you what I mean. And I'll explain why I'm doing this after I create that equation. So I have the force is equal to K, which remains the way it is. And in place of Q sub one, I'll write down three Q sub one. And in place of Q sub two, I'll write down 0 0.5 Q sub two. And now in place of the R to the power of two, which should go underneath here, I will replace that with this expression. Notice that I've replaced r to the power of two, which should be underneath here with that expression. Now notice what happens. If you rearrange correctly, you should end up getting the same expression on the top. And this denominator, which is a fraction, will end up looking like this, where you have 5.0 times 10 to the power of negative five newtons at the top. And at the bottom of this fraction, you will have k times q sub one times q sub two. Notice that this k will cancel out with that k. This q sub one will cancel out with that. q sub two will cancel out with that. And by calculating three times 0 0.5 times that, you will find out the force as a result of tripling q sub one and having q sub two. So let's use our calculator. Three times 0.5 times 5.0 times 10 to the power of negative five. And this gives us a force of 7.5 times 10 to the power of negative five newtons. So to put this in perspective, when the charge of one object is tripled and the other one is halved, then the force will increase to 7.5 times 10 to the power of negative five relative to what it was originally as 5.0 times 10 to the power of negative five. Okay, in question number C, we have both of the changes in A and B occur simultaneously. 
To make matters simple for us, I'm going to borrow some information that I obtained from this question. So here is my work for question C. I'm going to use what I found here. And in part A, we were told that the distance between the charges is doubled. So I'll write down F, much the same way I did this, F is equal to K times 3 Q sub 1 times 0 0.5 Q sub 2. And then I'll divide this by R times 2. So we have R squared here. To get R, we will square root both sides, where we end up getting the square root of K times Q sub 1 times Q sub 2 over 5.0 times 10 to the power of negative 5. So all of this is being square rooted. And since the distance is being doubled, and that represents r, we have to multiply 2 times r. So we will multiply all of this to 2. And don't forget that the equation for Coulomb's laws are squared. So we will now raise this to a power of 2. I know this looks complicated, but you'll see that if you distribute this power of 2 to this factor 2 and distribute this power of 2 to that entire factor, the square root and a square will cancel out. So that's the good thing. I'll rewrite the numerator. And having distributed that power of 2, that exponent, to the two factors, we end up getting four times, and the square root simply disappears. Using the same algebraic technique as I applied in part B, this expression ends up becoming the following. The numerator stays the way it is, and this gets multiplied to, just as we did in part B, 5.0 times 10 to the power of negative 5 newtons over 4 times k times q sub 1 times q sub 2. The 4 coming from this factor of 4, which gets multiplied there. Notice that this k and that k cancel, this q and that q cancel, q, q, and by multiplying the 3, 0 0.5 and 5.0 times 10 to the power of negative 5, then dividing by 4, you get your final answer. So it is the number on your screen divided by 4. And you end up with 1.875 times 10 to the power of negative 5 newtons. And of course, you can reduce that down to two significant figures if you like, which would be 1.9. Therefore, if we apply what is in part A and part B simultaneously, the force decreases from 2.5 to 1.9 times 10 to the power of negative 5. In question 3, what is the magnitude of the force of repulsion between two small spheres one meter apart if each has a charge of 1.0 times 10 to the power of negative 12 coulombs? So using the same formula as before, and the constant k being 9.0 times 10 to the power of 9 newton meters squared per coulomb squared. The charges are 1.0 times 10 to the power of negative 12 coulombs. Both of them are the same, so I'll just take this value and raise it to the power of 2, divided by the distance between them is 1.0 meters and that's being raised to the power of 2. And the final units should be in newtons. So let's go ahead and use our calculator really quickly. We have 9.0 times 10 to the power of 9, that's the constant, times 1.0, and notice that I'm putting it in parentheses, raised to the power of negative 12, and that's all being squared. And then we'll divide that by 1.0 to the power of 2. And we end up getting 9 times 10 to the power of negative 15 newtons. And there you have it. That concludes our lesson on simple calculations involving Coulomb's law. 
In videos to come, we'll look at more complicated situations. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.